Hi all, welcome to this the next video in our Urban Geography series and in today's video we're going to be looking at Mumbai and specifically we're going to be looking at some of the housing problems that Mumbai faces. Now a little bit of background and we're going to keep it fairly brief today. Now we're talking about Dharavi uh, in particular which is one of the, well the largest slum area in Mumbai and for a little bit of context, we're talking about an area with a population of somewhere between 600,000 to a million, most likely more than a million now, uh, in an area of less than a square mile. So we are talking about an area where population density is absolutely unbelievably huge, uh, you know, far beyond what you'll find in most cities, certainly any cities in Scotland. Now, what are some of the core issues that we're looking at here? So overcrowding is obviously a massive one. And along with that, we've got huge issues surrounding access to sanitation, to power, um, you know, electricity very, very particularly, uh, access to employment, access to healthcare, education, any of these kinds of things. We've also got huge concerns around pollution. Obviously, this marries into the, the access to sanitation issues that we've been talking about a moment ago. So, you know, a lack of rubbish collection, uh, and a very, very high, well, traffic congestion around Darvey is once you start to get into the, the centre of it, the streets are far too narrow for any traffic to actually penetrate. Uh, but all of this combined with very, very low building quality uh, leads to huge, huge problems in the area. Uh, you know, disease can be rampant when it does come when it does come up and there are huge issues there. Now, that's not to say that life in Darvey is all very, very negative. There are some huge positives that although, you know, formal employment is something that people do struggle to have access to, overall rates of unemployment are still extremely low. We've got huge amounts of people who are self-employed. They run their own workshops, primarily out of their own homes. Uh, and there's a huge amount of work that gets done, particularly in recycling um, in Darvey, amongst other things like pottery and whatnot as well. There's also, somewhat remarkably, for a slum area like Darby, there's very, very low rates of crime uh, in the area and there's a very, very high sense of community. But that doesn't detract from the fact that there are huge issues with the area. So, and as is the kind of the core with the Glasgow case study and this one, what are the management strategies? Now, with Darvey, we are keeping things a little bit more brief than we did with the Glasgow case study in that we're looking at primarily two main methods of dealing this, uh, dealing with these issues. You have got clear the slums or redevelop them. So when we talk about slum clearance, what are we talking about? Now, the key idea here is a pretty straightforward. Bulldoze the slums and rehome the residents. Now, a lot of the poorest people in these areas would get access to free housing off the back of this. You know, they would be given access to housing elsewhere. Uh, some people would be located in the high in high rise buildings that are proposed to be built on the current Daravi site, and others would be moved to places like uh, Navi Mumbai or New Mumbai, um, a housing development that's being built on the outskirts of Mumbai. Now, other things that come along with this is uh, building developers get access to prime land. Now, Daravi as a settlement is built on extremely valuable land. You know I mean, it is right in the centre of Mumbai, and as with, you know, kind of CBD-like areas in any city, this land is extremely valuable to developers. So the developers want to come in, and they're looking to try and build, you know, shopping centres, luxury malls, uh, luxury hotels, offices, and whatnot. Uh, and yeah, in, in some cases, uh, residents are consulted about uh, aspects of the demolition, where they would move to, where they would like to move to and whatnot. However, in others, the, there is no consultation carried out here. Um, and the point that's worth remembering at this stage is that these settlements, uh, by and large, are entirely illegal. You know, they're slum squatting settlements. So the people who live in these areas, they don't have any legal rights to the land that they live on. So in some places, you know, the the, the kind of the quote unquote local authorities, the this the city authorities of Mumbai, um, don't consult them in clearing the land that they live on. How effective is this as a as a method of dealing with these problems? Now it's in places it can be effective, but more often than not, it's extremely ineffective. 
So what we really get here is the demolition crews themselves get met with, at best, protests, if not violent protests, from the residents who they are removing from where, they're, from where they currently live. Um, this, you know, providing housing in the area is extremely limited in its scope. You know, 70% of the residents who live in Darvey would need to be rehomed elsewhere. You know, we opened at the start of this video with how high the, the population density in this area is. They are not trying to replicate that when they rebuild the area. So the vast majority of people would need to be relocated. Uh, and that's not a popular solution. Um, you know, a lot of people who live in these areas, they've got, you know, small industries, small workshops that are attached to their homes that if they lose that, they lose their livelihood. Uh, and, you know, a lot of their work is centres around being in Darvey. Now, the high-rise flats themselves aren't terribly popular. Um, most of them uh, are a little bit smaller than the dwellings that people have currently. They also can't be extended or expanded, particularly vertically, as is very common with the dwellings that people live in currently in Darby. And they also can't have these workshops in them because there are strict regulations about the type of uh, use that the flats themselves can have. Um, despite all of this, maintenance costs in the flats are very, very high. What you have started to find is that families who are talking about being allocated them, um, because of the land value in Darby, they actually sublet them out to, to, to middle class families. And then they themselves go and live in other slum areas and use the income to, to support themselves. Um, the small industries, you know, I've discussed this, that they can't continue them in the flats that they have. And the core thing with this, this doesn't address one of the big issues that we have here. More people keep migrating to Mumbai. India is currently seeing huge, huge rates of inward migration. Huge rates of people moving from rural areas into the cities in the quest to find work and to improve their overall lifestyle. That This doesn't solve that. You're reducing potential housing, uh, although the housing that we're talking about here is obviously extremely informal. You are reducing the capacity of that, so that doesn't address this overall problem. So, uh, slum redevelopment. Now, the key idea here is you go into these slums and you give the residents the rights to the land. You give them the ownership of this land on the notion that, that they will take care of it themselves. We also look at improving the amenities, the services that are provided there. You know, you try and provide clean, regular water access. You provide toilets, you provide refuse, rubbish collection to try and drive down rates of disease. Um, now, the, the main project that we talk about here is the, the Darvey Redevelopment Project, uh, you know, it's abbreviated to DRP. Um, and that is linked in with private investment, private business, who is obviously looking to get something in return, because as we've said, this land is very, very high value. So how effective is this? Now, in some places, this is much more effective. We've certainly seen it not in Darby, but in other slum areas around the world, where programs like this result in huge improvements in standard of living. By giving the people who live in the land higher quality building materials, they will improve the areas themselves. They will group together to form cooperative movements. Um, you know, literally what the co-op is named after. And these cooperative movements look to bring the skills from multiple people together to try and improve everybody's lot. However, in Darby, you are seeing some success with this. However, a lot of the residents, because this is done on a consultative basis, a lot of the residents are hesitant to sign up to it unless they're guaranteed to get the same amount of land that they have currently because they have workshops, they have their residence in this and they don't want to risk losing part of that. A lot of the motives of the developers just aren't trusted. You know, people look at this and they go, right, you want to get something out of us and that's not untrue. You know, the vast majority of the projects that have been proposed thus far are kind of top down in their structure. So they focus on providing land for, uh, you know, shopping centres, luxury apartments, hotels, like we talked about earlier, for the developments to turn a profit. And they don't focus on the needs of the residents who currently live there. Although slowly, slowly this is improving and it is changing. 
Now, an example of how this is changing is a, a, a project called URBs or URBZ. Uh, now, what this is, it's uh, in, to lift directly from them, uh, and it's an experimental urban research and action collective that's set up by professionals, such as planners, architects, etc., that aim to give residents the power to drive change in their communities. And they look at running workshops to drive planning decisions and to try and equip people with skills to improve their area. And some of the examples of different things that they do, you know, I mean, so they improvised, uh, so, you know, in the top left here, you know, uh, we've got covers to stop rug, uh, rubbish clogging up drains, but allowing water to uh, still freely flow. Um, they provide plans to ensure that there's basic uh, kind of set structures for housing along with improved materials to make sure they're of higher quality. You then look at bringing the local community together and using everybody's skills to help build these homes for everybody. You also expand that out in terms of trying to provide healthcare and education in these areas to drive these improvements on. Now, I'm going to wrap this one up here, guys. Um, the next video, which will be the last one as part of the urban topic, is going to be looking at transport problems in Mumbai. And until then, I will see you guys later. Bye.